Hello fellow Voyagers, Jess here with Odyssey Human today to talk about how one tiny affirmation can create huge shifts in your life, how to do that. Welcome to the channel. This is the place where we talk about and explore the outer reaches of human experience and consciousness and discuss things like advanced emotional mastery, manifesting, extended human capabilities, and more. Welcome, I'm Jess, I'm so glad you're here. And today I want to talk about affirmations. This is a topic I haven't dived too deeply in on my channel yet, but I was reflecting on it and kind of wanted to share my experience with it, how we leverage affirmations, really how they work, and then share a story of how I created essentially my dream job using one tiny little affirmation. So let's kind of give an overview of affirmations. When I say affirmations, I'm saying we use them in manifestation, in reality creation, essentially to declare some truth about ourselves. And um, so when we're saying it, right, we use language to create meaning. And then meaning creates tr truth, right? When something means something to us, we've created some little equation. I like to call them these truth equations, where X means Y, so that means Z. <laughs> and so... This is just how our brain works. This is what we do with language. And so by intentionally using language, knowing that um, we can create affirmations that then um, we declare as truth, we create, we, we back, work backwards and create a truth using an affirmation and then watch it kind of um, come into our, watch our reality shape around that uh, affirmation, around that truth. And the potency of an affirmation is really directly proportional to its believability. So you only have to say it once, right? It's not, it's not in the saying of the words. It's not really, you know, when we use affirmations, I think a lot of people when they first come, and myself included, we look at it like this magical spell. It's like, if I just say these words, these things are going to happen. Um, <laughs> Really, when you think about it, we're manifesting all the time. We always have been. That's just, manifestation is just the process, uh, the, the label that we have for what we've been doing since the moment we were kind of aware of being in this lifetime, right? Of we were born and then we're manifesting the whole time until the moment we die. That's just kind of the, ex the baseline of human experience. And so we're doing this very naturally every day very, very naturally. So you're going to see as I'm describing how manifest or how affirmations work, some common threads and oh, yeah, that's what I do. <clears throat> I'm already doing naturally. So the more we can weave into our natural processes of and become aware of how we naturally manifest, um, the easier it's going to be to then manifest these big things and be consciously aware of the process and then use it to get the outcomes we want. So let's return, <laughs> kind of went off on a tangent there. So again, the point of an affirmation is to create truth. And if you really believe something, you really only have to say it once for it to be true for you. When you, right, when you, when believability is at 100%, you totally believe this, you only have to say something once and it will then be cre it will then show itself that that reality, that version of, of you who, for whom that is true will then just naturally be created and you'll find yourself there. This is kind of like when people are like, I always knew I was going to be the president of the United States or, you know, this isn't something that they're saying over and over and over again, but we're going to talk about that in a second. So if believability is low, if when you say your affirmation, right, you're trying to declare a truth about yourself, you know you're in the sweet spot. If you say it once and it packs that full punch, that's really all you have to, that's it. It's already done. When you have that level of believability of this is 100% totally true for me, you don't have to repeat it over and over. If believability is low, if when you say this affirmation, like for me, um, I might say, I have my dream body. I have my dream body. That doesn't feel, I feel that's like, mm, it's maybe 40% true for me. <laughs> so we have to 
that's when we have to do repetition. And it's okay. It is okay if right now when you say your affirmation or the thing that you want to be true for you, if it doesn't feel 100% real, if it doesn't feel 100% true, that's okay. That's also where in this commu- in the manifesting community, a lot of coaches will say, just keep repeating it, keep repeating it. Because repetition is one of the ways that we increase believability. If we keep repeating something, right, we're, we're actually creating neural pathways. We're wiring neurons together so that it becomes more natural. And then when it becomes natural, it becomes our truth. Like we say it enough that we're like, oh, I kind of am starting to believe this. We, you know, and this is how we get ourselves into trouble when we think uh, we have a negative affirmation about ourselves that we're constantly repeating, you know, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I'm whatever. That's how we impress (laughs) those and then have it reflected in our reality. So that's also how we can impress something positive or something that we want to happen is through the same process. So we just have to put a lot more energy into repetition. So when believability is low, we're going to have to repeat, 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 and it's okay. It's a little bit longer path, but it's less, there's less potency behind it, but we can keep, keep repeating, keep repeating, keep repeating, keep repeating. And we will move into our believability will start to increase with the affirmation. Um, And that's okay. That's just kind of how they work. It's okay. If that's where you are. Um, and starting to check my notes. Like I said, it's not saying it that it's not saying it as a magical spell that gets you the thing. It's that you arrive in a place of truth with that affirmation as when you say it, you a hundred percent believe it. And then at that point it's done. Like you've, you've arrived in the sweet spot. This is true for me, period. Fact, fact. When you say it, it's like, this is a fact about me, regardless of what the 3d is showing me. This is a fact for me. Um, and I also want to add, you know, we can, we can also, we can increase believability by repetition, but we can also, we can fast track that process and get to the place of something being a hundred percent true for us. And we totally believe it. We're totally on board with it. Um, by excavating, excavating through the limiting beliefs, because, um, if you say an affirmation and it doesn't feel true to you, That's because there's a larger fact. There is a larger affirmation still in play that you've already instilled. That's the program that's kind of running, right? And let's go back to the, I have my dream body example for me. And so knowing that is the first thing and then digging into it, excavate that. And then you can put more juice behind it. That's the fastest way to kind of dig into the believability end and say, okay, why do I not believe this? Why, when I say this, do I not believe it? And all these stories are going to start coming up. So when I say, I have my dream body, I'm like, I don't, I don't believe that. Why? Because I have, because I've been fat most of my life. That's, that's a story that I've repeated. I acknowledge (laughs) But I've also, and then when I'm really taking an objective look at it, oh wait, I also have had periods where I have had my dream body. So it is possible for me. So there, see, I just, I just gained some leverage there. Okay, this is possible for me to have my dream body. What was I doing? What, how did I create that? Well, once I had an eating disorder, you know, I don't want to do that again. Uh, The other time I was lifting weights and working out all the time. Okay. You know, I could potentially do that, but I, I am capable of creating my dream body. And so the faster you can dig in and start to kind of excavate these limiting beliefs of like, oh, well, really anything can change. I can have the body that I want. You know, it just takes certain adjustments and it's possible for me to have kind of any style body I want, any type of body I want. I can adjust these things. Um, and you dig into that and then you can quickly, quickly increase your believability by doing that process, you know, really get clear. And remember, while you're doing this, there could be a bigger belief in play of just not believing in manifestation of just not believing that everything you're experiencing is really a flavor of you. Everything you're experiencing is created within your consciousness. You know, it's this kind of 
um, holographic experience that your your awareness is having and, and because of that everything is really equal right if it's all a hologram then the meanings of certain things you know the realness of certain things kind of drifts away so that might be one of the bigger beliefs in play that you can look for you know one of the things that is sometimes hard to get past is like you know things that we've been taught or learned like i can't change my eye color or i can't you know there's a bigger belief there in play that you're trying to move past and it's like well maybe i can if i'm if i'm just this is an experience in a hologram and my thoughts and feelings are really what is creating my reality then i get to really declare whatever truth i want you know, miracles do happen. Amazing things do happen. And why can't it happen for me? Why can't it happen in this circumstance? So dig into that and look for those bigger beliefs that are in play and ask yourself, why don't I believe this? You know, what other stories are already active that are kind of overriding my attempt at this new story, at this new truth? Why does my phone always do that? <laughs> um, so I want to share with you quickly how I used one affirmation to manifest my dream job. And that one affirmation is this job is already mine. The job is already mine. And <clears throat> when I found the job, I, a, a series of synchronistic events, uh, I was gently toying with, oh, maybe I should get a full-time job. I already had a part-time job, so I wasn't, it wasn't this huge need, like urgent need for me series of synchronistic events kind of led me to a job posting, I intuitively was like, oh, this is really perfect for me. And I, I started, I recognized in that moment, because I had been kind of led to this posting, because I wasn't fully expecting to get a job so quickly, that, oh, there's something in this. There's, and that, I used that thought of, for me, I have meaning equations of, you know, when things happen very synchronistically, that means that it's meant to be. That's my, my bigger belief that was, I, was, I could anchor to. And so I applied, you know, I went through all the steps, I interviewed, and every time I thought about the job, every time the job, the thought of the job popped into my mind, I returned to the affirmation that this job's already mine. And when I said that, it felt 100% true to me. Because I had that bigger belief in place of this was meant to be. This was already meant to be, I was led to this, the, the series of events that led up to this were totally crazy. It involved like me find, you know, <clears throat> intuiting to go to a Craigslist. I, one day I was just like, I should go to Craigslist. And then I found this research study and then I participated in the research study and then the research study led to finding the job posting and then the job posting. So that series of events, I was like, this was just too random, you know, the pathway was too magical and I believe that this was meant to be. So I kept returning to the job is mine. Every time I thought about the job and I could feel myself start to get a little worry or doubt of, oh, what if they don't pick, you know, and then I was like, no, no, you just keep re redirecting like a puppy coming back to the job's mine. It's already mine. And I was able to leverage that bigger belief that was already in play. I know that this is meant to, like, I know it's meant to be, it happened way too randomly. It's way too synchronistic. It's already mine. Like it's meant to be. So <clears throat> use that same process of excavation, of digging, of piggybacking off of a bigger belief to also bolster the believability of your one tiny little affirmation. The job's mine. The job is mine. And I just kept returning to that. The job is mine. The job's already mine. The job is already mine. I, and it felt true to me every time I said it. I did not stray into other thoughts about the job, but I would kind of just dismiss it and say, it's already mine. The job is already mine. Um, and then it was. Then it literally was. <laughs> and, you know, that was a decision made by multiple people to give me the job. So that was me then, you know, even if there's other people involved in it, know that it's really... <clears throat> Everything is you, everything you're experiencing is you and everything you're creating is you. It's all a flavor of you and you have that ultimate control in saying, this is already mine, this is mine. And it even helps sometimes when I say my affirmation to close my eyes because if reality isn't showing me the version of myself 
for whom that is true, when I close my eyes and say it, it, it almost is like I can imagine being the me who, for whom that statement is a fact. You know, and I did that when I said the job is mine. I closed my eyes, I was like, the job is mine. And I envisioned myself at the job. It was very light though, very light touch. So let me know what you thought, drop a comment below. Hope this was helpful to you so that you know how to leverage affirmations, how to use them most potently, how to get what you want quickly. And thanks for watching, have a great day.